good afternoon. You're welcome to another of our series, specifically for SMEs, keeping with our promise to continue to bring you content to help you with your business to grow, to scale up your business, and also to help you a capable um, presenter. Her name is Margaret Jackson. She's a managing partner of Rainbow Consult. She has over 25 years experience as a management consultant. She is certified by the Learning and Performance Institute as a trainer and as and an assessor. Margaret is also an IFC, that's International Finance Corporation consultant. And so this topic is communicating with stakeholders. Please stay tuned. It will interesting i promise you to you margaret thank you very much dennis uh, and good afternoon i'm excited because i got the opportunity to share a few words with the participants before we started i thought it was awesome please let it flow i would like to hear from you just in the chat box as i start i would like to hear from you uh, the organizations, what are you into? I, I'd like to hear that. And I would like to say a warm welcome to you and thank you for joining us online at this very busy time. I know some are on lockdown, but it's still busy because there's, there's, we've got a lot on our minds. As Dennis said, I am Margaret Jackson, and it's always a pleasure to work with SMEs and to work with entrepreneurs because I'm an entrepreneur myself. You know, we are offering you this webinar because we know you are concerned about how to keep your businesses during these very, should I say difficult? Some say, don't say difficult, but I must say that uh, it can be stressful during these stressful times. I mean, we don't know what's happening. We don't know what will happen next. One of the most important things you can do for your business during this period is to communicate. And I'm sure you're thinking, we keep on communicating. We are always communicating. Well, let's look at the sort of communication I'll be talking about. You know, communicate with everyone who is concerned or connected to your business so that they know the steps you are taking to protect them. You know, we need to protect the people who are concerned about our businesses. So, for example, if you decide to close your business temporarily, you know, maybe because of the lockdown, maybe some, some you're, you're running out of raw materials. I don't know what the challenge may be, but if you decide to close, for example, your business temporarily, let your stakeholders know what is happening so that they do not become frustrated or confused. You know, please listen to my next statement carefully. If you can't, please write it down. Closing the rumor mill early is the best way to protect your organization's reputation. Don't let people say, hmm, go around doing nye, 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 cha, 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 here and there about your business. Send out the information yourself. So this webinar can help you to think through how you can communicate effectively. So it's about thinking through it now. And uh, this does not get into how to adjust your business. No, that's not what this uh, webinar is about, or your financial plans, or your marketing plans. No, we have other webinars that talk about this. But this is about communicating your decisions. And please note this too, quickly and effectively. So closing the rumor, man, uh, rumor mill and communicating your decisions quickly and in an effective manner. So preparing your communications is key and is a must. Here is why in a snapshot. I'm going to tell you why in a snapshot shows. You know, I always say around March, February, and, 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 and last year, December, we all kept on saying, oh, there's a virus in China. So we were not, we looked on and concerned. We didn't think that it will come to you know, Africa, we never thought about that. So then at a point we saw it, we realized that this thing is coming. I mean, we can't, it's, it's as if we are helpless. So it was, when will it hit us? Now is a question of what next? It has really hit us. We have been on lockdown, have, some have been on lockdown, the lockdown has been released, some have gone on lockdown again. So you see, today we are all facing the pandemic and it is not when, it is what next. The situation, 
uh, is different. This one is different, isn't it? Why? Because it affects our physical, emotional, and economic health. Can you imagine? It doesn't even only affect your, your, your physical health. It also affects your economic health. Your, our businesses are suffering from this. And our emotional health. You know, sometimes I, I need to confess this. <laughs> These days, around 2, 1, I wake up, you know, and I'm like, why am I up? I'm so unsure. I'm not certain. I don't know. Sometimes I ask myself, why do I wake up? I said, I don't know. And I'm worried. You know, it affects us, our emotions. Please write in the chat box for me. What is the foremost thought in your minds about this pandemic? Please write for me in the chat box. Let's, let's start working fast. So please, a few seconds. At this time, what do you think about most? And I'll be working with um, Jimmy, who is my colleague from IFC. He'll be reading your comments for me. Jimmy, have we got anything now? Yes, Margaret, thank you so much. And uh, thank you everyone for sending in your comments. Uh, your first question on their names and uh, the, the, the company and the industry they are in. So we have a couple, so many that have come in. We have Winco Concept. We are in Building Materials. Yusuf Kabir of Tresses of Gold Services. We have Sajo of Agro Processing. We have Building Contractor, Ayeola, thank you so much. We have cosmic insurance brokers and uh, others which are coming in through. And right into your question, uh, some of the thoughts Grace is saying, how do I move my business forward? Yeah, and they keep on coming. Let me take one last one here before. Will the pandemic end anytime soon? Please proceed, ah. Margaret. <laughs> yes, this, you see, I think the second one, you are just like me. It's like, will it end very soon? I don't know. So let's look at what we are going to discuss. And these are all legitimate concerns. Let's look at what we'll be discussing. We will discuss identifying stakeholders' concerns in this era, creating effective communications, using appropriate communication channels, and then we'll conclude beautifully. Then we will, what should you be able to do by the end of the session? You should be able to determine the concerns of your key stakeholders, create effective written communications to address these concerns, and finally, identify the right communications channels to reach your stakeholders. Now let's look at the benefits. So I stay in this workshop. What are the benefits? You see, by the... Uh, by staying in this workshop, you should be able to calm stakeholders' concerns during crisis. So that's what we are aiming at. And we also aim that you should be able to keep your company top of mind in this period. Because you see, a lot of companies are now competing for, for business because uh, times are hard and people are making they're thinking hard before they make choices. It's also sh to show that you are a professional. I mean, if you go through this and you do the things that we recommend, it will show your professionalism. You see, if you need loans on current loans or other assistance from financial institutions, showing such professionalism like we, um, I'm saying you should be able to show at the end can help to reassure them that your business is worth them taking the financial risk because it is likely to survive during this period. And it will also demonstrate your company's commitment to being a valuable member of community. You know, now let's look at our ground rules. I always say there's no kingdom without rules. Now that we are together, we are in a kingdom. So let's look at our rules. Please, please participate. And I like it. I see your comments coming in. Don't stop. Even when I'm speaking, if you have a comment, put in there. Because Jimmy will read it. And if I may have to answer, I will answer. And respect each other. If someone puts something in the chat box and you don't agree with them, please, please. You can also put your opinion, but don't rubbish what your colleague says. And please, your microphones have been muted because there are so many of us and will not be able to do this in one hour if we all speak at the same time. Thank you very much. And thank you for understanding. And I move on to telling us your name and the type of business you own. We are still doing it. So please let it flow. Jimmy, have we got any more on the type of business? Yes, Margaret, thank you. So they are coming in thick and fast. We have Kelvin. Kilsta International School and Nursery and Primary School. Then we have the Chaba Integrated Farms Limited. We are in a new normal. 
yeah so they're coming thick and fast kindly proceed okay thank you thank very you so much. much everyone thank you jimmy and thank you everyone now let's look at this let's go into the real mccoy let's let's move on to the reason why we are here identifying stakeholders concerns during crisis while it is tempting to put out one blanket notice i'm sure most of us have one blanket notice for everyone that is not the best practice because you see everybody does not have the same consent even the two that answered you could see that we didn't have the same consent now let's look at who might be interested in learning about what your business is going to do to weather the storm during this period because there are various stakeholders so let's look at who might be interested ah let's move on who might be interested now you see i i i i want to explain something about a stakeholder a stakeholder is anyone who has interest in your company this person can be internal or external you see the workers can have can be a stakeholder and then those outside of our organization can be our stakeholders as well please in the chat box tell me who do you think some of your stakeholders are for your business please tell me So Jimmy, are we set? Are we having some in? Yes, we have. So we have uh, one saying government and customers. Another one says my clients. Okay, thank you guys for sending in. Yeah. I see here another one saying students, teacher and parents. That is Abimbola, thank you so much. And uh, one last one, my stakeholders are my farmers. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ah, Please yes, proceed, Margaret. yes, yes, your farmers. You are all so spot on. Now let's look at who our stakeholders can be. Yes, let's look at a, a, a normal company. Yes, your management. So if you have other management staff in your on your farm, they are your stakeholders. Your employees, yes, your farmers, they are your stakeholders. The customers. So you are building contractors. So the people you build for, they are your customers. You are a consultant. So who are your suppliers? Maybe you are a trainer like myself. So those who supply you uh, paper, F A4 paper, uh, photocopiers, they are your suppliers. Then the regulatory authorities, we can't run away from them. They are your, your stakeholders, the local community, lenders, investors, you know, all these people are stakeholders and all these people have different concerns at this time about our business. So if someone lent money to you or someone has invested in your business, these two people have similar concern. Please, in the chat box, tell me what do you, what do you think lenders and investors are concerned about at this time? Your lenders and investors. Jimmy, please read them as soon as they come in. There's one which says my lenders are concerned about repayments, yeah. repayments of funds. Aminu Osman says uh, repayment, how to recover loans. Thank you so much. Interest rates and repayment. Thank you so, so much. Augustine says profits and repayment of loans. Thank you so much. Ah, they are spot on. If we were in 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 face to face class, I would say raise your right hand, take it as far back to your left scapula as possible, give yourself a pat on the back, mention your name, and say well done, well done, well done. So I mean, well done, well done, well done. Yes, that's it. You see, uh, investors and lenders they are asking, will I lose money? Will I lose money when I invest at this time? You see. So those are the questions that investors and lenders are asking. Now, let me show you what management is asking. How do I keep the business running? And someone mentioned it early on when we were talking about the concerns on our minds. Then with our employees, I will want you to write for me what you think our employees are asking themselves, their concern at this particular time. And Jimmy, you start telling me as soon as they start the yes. answers start yes. yes thank you so apena says salary ah, celeste yes. says salary yeah. 
salary payments, job security. <laughs> yeah. Ola says job security. Oh. Kesta says security, loan repayment. Thank you so much, guys. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. You are all so spot on. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. You are fantastic. Yes, will I get paid? Will I be safe? They're also thinking about their safety because there are all these safety protocols, the, uh, uh, the COVID-19 safety protocols. So if we have to come to work, if we have to go out and construct for other people, do you provide, will my employer provide all the PPEs? Are we safe? The place that we are going to, do they obey the protocols? These are things that employees think about. And let's look at our customers. They are thinking, will I get what I need? Will I be safe? They are wondering when I go to that place, the shop, when I go to their, their factory, will I be safe? Do they have burn car buckets? Do they have masks? Are they wearing masks? Will I be safe when I enter? And our suppliers, let's look. Our suppliers are wondering, will you still buy from us? Will we get paid? Will we be safe when we do business with you? Then the regulatory authorities are thinking, how is this business helping minimize the effects of the pandemic? Let's look at the local authorities. Will our town get what it needs? Will we be safe because this business is here? Are they not going to infect us? How do they conduct themselves in the community? So you see different stakeholders have different concerns. So you cannot have one communication because different stakeholders are looking up to you to address their particular concerns. Please, I'll leave this on for a few seconds look at it because what we are going to do will be based on this because there are different stakeholders. Thank you. Okay, I'm moving on now. And I'm going to talk about creating effective communications. <laughs> I'm sure after all that I've said, you're still wondering, you might be thinking, I already know what I need to tell them. Isn't that enough? The answer is not, not really. And why am I saying this? Now let's listen to this. You see, how you say something is very important. You know what to say, but how you say it is critical. You see, the right message communicated the wrong way may lead to misinterpretation. So when communicating, it is very important to phrase your message in a way that your listener wants to hear. Hey, please, ladies and gentlemen, this does not mean telling them what they want to hear, even if it's false. No, that's not what I'm saying. It means framing your message, that message, in a way that touches the matters that are more of most concern to them, to that intended audience. So framing it in a way that is important to the customer, framing it in a way that is important to the employee, framing it in a way that is important to the regulatory authority. That's what we are talking about. So before we get into specifics, you see, I want us, I want us, I, I want to get into how to create an effective message. I know most of you have already sent letters out. Please write yes in the chat box if you have sent letters out. Jimmy, have we got some coming in? Yes, I'm coming in, Margaret. Yeah. Augustine, Abilai, Omole. Thank you so much, guys. Benjamin, okay. Taiwo. Please okay. proceed. Okay, so if they have, then what sort of message? I'd like to know. Just type one, one a, a key phrase, a key, a, a, summarize it. What, what message did you send out to them? One says, Sunny Sanusi says, greetings to all. Okay, that's a message. Another one says, staying safe against coronavirus. Okay, thank Benjamin you. Benjamin says, we do outdoor photo shoots now. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. 
Thank you very much. Thank you for your great answers. You have hit on important components of a well-written communication. Let's start at looking at the key messages that you should convey in your notes. In fact, any good communication in this period should address the following three key messages that I'm going to show to you. And I call them MCA. What, what do I mean? You should, we, we, there's that bit of empathy, concern, and actions. You see, let your audience know that you are on the same team as they are. We are in this together, aren't we? We are all in this together. That's why it's a pandemic. You understand what their pain are, pains are, and you share them too. It's a global thing. We all are sharing this. So let them know that we are in this together. Then what about concern? You know, you have taken the time, so you let them know that you have taken the time to think about them in particular and are looking for a solution that meets everybody's needs. You want them to succeed. You know, initially I said it's about our health, it's about our emotions. So you also let them realize that you want them to succeed, to be healthy, to be comfortable, and to be as happy as possible. I'm not saying to be but as possible through this rough period. You know, then you tell them about actions. They say actions speak louder than words. So tell them about the actions. Describe the specific actions your business is taking to combat this, this uh, pandemic. If the action is going to adversely impact them, tell them and briefly explain why you have to take that action. You see, the order you present your information is another important consideration in how you say it. So now we are saying how we say it is important. We must show empathy, concern, and the actions, but there's an order. And that's what I'm going to unveil to you very soon in my next slide. This is the order. Recognition of the current situation. So whenever you send a letter, you must say the recognition of the current situation. So you start by giving a frank assessment of the overall crisis. Use this to create a sense of empathy. You remember, we are talking about empathy and agency, as well as the overarching reason behind your actions. For example, tell investors something like this. After careful consideration, we have come to the conclusion that we cannot continue business as usual. The coronavirus is here. The infection rate is rising, and we want to protect our employees and customers from the worst of it. So that is the current situation. Isn't it rising? It is. Appreciation of the stakeholder. Then you appreciate the stakeholder. Let's, let's look at this, for example. Thank you. you don't, don't, don't go generic. Like, thank you for your support. You know, that, that is too generic. It doesn't make them feel valued. You can write something like, tell employees something like, if you are talking to employees, you are the face of our company. We recognize that your excellent customer service is what, keeps our, is what gives our company such a good reputation. You know, it makes them feel that, yes, you have really taken notice. Then management of expectations. Ease the reader into the bad news because there's bad, you know, coronavirus is bad news. So ease the reader into the bad news about what is coming and why you believe that it is necessary to take extreme measures. So now let's look at the example. Tell customers something like, although we are going to make changes to how we do business, we believe this is necessary to protect protect everyone in the long run. We anticipate that these are only temporarily, temporary, uh, temporary changes, and we will soon be able to return to our normal ways. Beautiful. Then you move on to explanation of the impact on the company, because it has impact on the company. Corona has affected us all in one way or the other. So explain the actions that you are taking, you know, for example, tell employees something like this. This is the impact. We are reducing our hours from 12 to from 12 noon to 4 p.m. daily for the next three weeks. During that time, we will not take new orders. We will only finish serving the, and delivering pre-existing orders. We will reduce your hours, but are committed to giving everybody some hours so that everyone can still have some income. You know, explanation. So you are cutting down on hours. Now let's look at the next one which is commitment to the public good. So 
affirm the business commitment to the greater good. So for example, you tell lenders something like this, those who are lending money to you. We are trying very hard to balance the community's need for safety and isolation with our need to produce income so we can repay our loans. We are committed to reducing the public health risk, continuing to provide the valuable service for which our customers depend upon us and honoring all our financial commitments. And appreciation for ongoing support is the last one. So you close by thanking them in advance for their understanding and cooperation. This makes it feel less like a mandate than a mutual, albeit not pleasurable agreement of how things will proceed in the short term. So for example, you can tell lenders, thank you for your understanding and patience during this unusual time. Remember that as you weave your message through the structure, you absolutely need to convey the following information. So this is the information that you need to convey. The impact on the stakeholder, protection for employees and the stakeholder, changes to customer service, current time frame for action. As for protection, we are all big on protection. So you talk about the PPEs, the uh, face mask, you talk about sanitizers that you have, you talk about all those, and um, this week, Someone sent me a video and, and, and I was impressed. There's a restaurant in Ghana known as Boca and the lady has reopened and she made a short video to her stakeholders and she showed us and she explained why now you can't sit in, in the air conditioned rooms and because of coronavirus and the protocols that we need to speak, sit in airy places. She's now opened her terrace. She showed us the terrace and she also how you, the pedal, how you wash your hands, the provisions she's made for uh, patrons and even how she has socially distanced the tables in the terrace. And she also gave us a snippet of how the employees are keeping themselves healthy and safe the PPEs showed an employee who had come in with a, with a, no, a face mask, the employee washing themselves, how they protect themselves and how they are working to ensure that everybody is protected. And I thought that, wow, this is a fantastic uh, message to us. Now let's look at a sample letter. So we are going to look at a sample letter that has the structure that I've been talking about and we are going to work through what was the objective to identify key components of effective notification for stakeholders in this period? And you will identify the main points within the letter. So now, remember, I don't want us to forget um, uh, Rameka. I call it Rameka. So look at the structure again. This is what we are going to identify in the letter that I'm going to show to you. Rameka, recognition, appreciation, management of expectation, explanation of impact, commitment to the public good, and appreciation for ongoing support. So Rameka. Wow, so let's move on. So the letter goes this way, and I'm going to do the first example for all of us. This isn't business as usual, and it's time of great stress and uncertainty. It's also a moment in time when the work we are doing is most critical. I'm going to identify how this letter was sent by Mr. Bezos, the CEO and founder of Amazon. So when the crisis, when the pandemic broke in the US, he wrote a letter to his staff. And we are looking at how he wrote to his one of his stakeholders, his employees. So now let's look at this. I'm going to show you how he recognized the current situation. So this, is, this isn't business as usual. And it's a time of great stress and uncertainty. It's also a moment in time when the work we are doing is, is it's most critical. Now let's look at this. There's also a point for appreciation for the stakeholder. Please look at this and write in the chat box where you think he's appreciating the stakeholder. Please, it is a long sentence. So you will start with the first two letters of the, of the sentence and the last 
uh, the last two letters where the appreciation ends. So first two letters, first two words where appreciation starts and first two, last two words where appreciation ends. So you start with the first two words, you give me ellipsis, then you continue with the last two words of that sentence. Are we on the same page? So let's start writing. And Jimmy, we'll, we'll have about 20 seconds for that. Yes. So there's one here, Obot says, okay. Oh, okay, Jimmy, so, yes. hold, on, hold on. So if now, if we are not chatting and we want to answer Q&A, they should write in the Q&A so that we can go to the Q&A and look at it so that we can, we can tease out the real questions and answer from normal chat. But read what is in chat now. Okay, so they are really coming in. There was one, dear customers, we take orders now. There's one that just came in. We are, and then the last one to us, that's John Aduo. Mm -hmm. Okay. Adairo says uh, uh, we are providing and then most vulnerable. Jacqueline says, dear customers. Okay. okay. Dear Amazonian, then people are depending on us. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. So now let me also show what I have. Yeah. So this, we are providing a vital service to people everywhere, especially to those like the elderly who are most vulnerable. Yeah, people are depending on us. So you were spot on. Thank you very much. Now let's look at, there's another part where he appreciates the stakeholders and I would want to show it to you this time. So that one is, I've received hundreds of emails from customers and seen posts on social media thanking you all. Your efforts are being noticed at the highest levels of government. And President Trump early this week thanked this team profusely. So you see, you can even appreciate twice. You can, all, all the steps can be two or three times for so long as they are genuine and for so long as they send the message across strongly. So now let's move on to the next one. And we want to identify management of expectations. Please, as usual, the first two letters and the last two letters. Let's do this for about 20 seconds, please. Mary Jude says across the world, and then the second one is laid off. Cynthia says we are hiring. Shedrak says we appreciate you. Okay, so this is management of expectations. How are we managing expectations? So it is, I'm sad to tell you because he's managing the expectation. I predict things are going to get worse before they get better. You see, so the, he's managing the expectation. It, it will get worse before it gets better. So that when it get worse, you don't get worried because you've been warned. It is said that to be warned, to be, what? To be forewarned is to, what? Before, uh, to, to be forearmed or something. So you need to warn people so that they get their loins. So that's management of expectations and explanation of the impact. Let me do this one. I think it's fair that I also do one. So this is how he explains the impact on the company. We've implemented a series of preventive health measures for employees and contractors at our sites around the world. Everything from increasing the frequency and intensity of cleaning to adjusting our practices in fulfillment centers to ensure the recommended social distancing guidelines. So you see, things have changed because of the social distancing guidelines. What are you telling your employees about the social distancing guidelines? What changes are you making in your organization about the social distancing guidelines? These are things that I would want us to think about as entrepreneurs. 
as as uh, I mean, we we can't go about business as usual. Now, because I did one, I think it's also fair that you also identify the other explanation of the impact of the, on the company. There's one in this paragraph. I would like you to identify it, please. There's one that just came in. Mm -hmm. The family says we can go online. Olabisi says great stress. Uh, another one says uncertainty. Okay, thank uh, you. One last one. Oh, Adaora says we have placed orders. Masks remains in short supply. We have placed order on face masks. That's oh, Cynthia. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Was it Cynthia who said it? Yes. Give Cynthia a wow. Look at this. Wow, Cynthia. Lovely. We've placed purchase orders for millions of face masks. We want to give to our employees and contractors who cannot work from home. But very few of those orders have been filled. Masks remain in short supply. So it's an impact on us. We, they have to observe the protocols, but they are not getting masks. And you need to tell your employees. Otherwise, they would think you are not concerned. You see, we, we, we spoke about empathy. We spoke about concern and we spoke about action. And he said, I have placed the orders. He has taken that action, but you see he's concerned. So he's taking the action. If the masks are not in, it is not because he hasn't placed them. So these are things that we have to consider when we are writing our letters. And finally, commitment to public good. I think I should leave you to answer this. So please, where does he state his commitment to public good. James, Jimmy, have we got any coming in? Yes, there's one which says, how Amazon can play its best role. We want mm -hmm. Amazon will continue to do its part. Mm -hmm. Amazon does Bamkole. Mm -hmm. We will stop in making our own part. That is Cassie Lawson. And they keep on coming. Oh. Thank you so much, guys. Back oh, to you, Madrid. Oh, thank you. And thank you, Jimmy. So my time, you see, he's talking about himself. My time, my own time. It, that's how serious it is as the founder. My own time and thinking is now wholly focused on COVID-19. He said wholly focused on COVID-19, not anything but on COVID-19. And how Amazon can best play its role. I want you to know Amazon will continue to do its part. Wow. You could even end the whole thing. And we won't stop looking for new opportunities to help. So that's the commitment to public good. I think the whole, the whole paragraph even uh, covers it. And I think I, I started, so I should end my Rameka and his appreciation for ongoing support. He says, please take care of yourselves and your loved ones. I know that we are going to get through this together. So that is what I meant about the structure. So this is Rameka again for your information. Just look at it briefly. Isn't this wonderful? If you write your stakeholders in this way, they will know that you really are empathetic, you show concern, and you have really, if you put in the actions, that you have really put in the actions, then they know that you are a very professional person and you'll be top of, of, of their minds. Anytime they want to do business, they will think about you. So let's look at follow-on messages for employees. So let's say that now you have sent this for them. 
if they have to work remotely, you have to send rules for working remotely. If you don't have that, you can go online. And lots of people have rules for working remotely. You can tweak them. Even on my own company's website, Rainbow Consult, we have one for working remotely because we are working remotely. If it's on site, you see Jeff Bezos was talking about social distancing protocol. Go in there and look for some. I know that ILO has also come out um, with, with rules for working on site. So you can check these, um, you can go online and check and adapt them and tweak them to suit your own situation. So what if employees become ill? These are things that we are talking about. You know, if you are uh, allowing your employees to work from home, you communicate. But if they are on site and someone falls ill, you know traceability is crucial in containing COVID-19. The virus spreads quickly and by air. Now they keep on saying it's airborne. So anyone who has been near someone who has become infected needs to be notified so that they can self-quarantine or stop the spread. So inform your employees notification procedures. Please, if you don't have notification procedures, you should. For example, are you creating a hotline or should they call the HR or if you don't have HR, who should they call in your organization? What information should they provide? Example, when they got sick, the last time they were in the office or in the factory floor, who else was working near them? What other customers they served? Uh, what med now, now let's talk about medical support. For example, will, you, will your business cover all costs of treatment or testing or do they have to do it? You see, let's have these procedures in place. So here is what you should communicate with each stakeholder. So for everything is preventive measures and changes to customer service. Plus, if it's your customer, options for submitting questions or suggestions, for example, if it, your employees, it could be work safety, for your lenders and investors, changes to your business plan, for example, for suppliers, it could be impact on orders and payments in the community, what you are doing to contribute to fighting the pandemic. So now let's look at this briefly. You see, even though it's tempting to put a message in one place and mark it as done on your to-do list, huh, it is important to use multiple communication channels to get the message out. Don't just use one. This is because not everybody prefers to access information the same way. So this module that I'm going to show to you in the, in the next slide will, will teach you what to do. So now let's look at this. This is a communication channel, and it's a tool or method for communication. You see, each communications channel uses communication methods in varying degrees. This continuum of robustness that I've shown here identifies the amount of information that can effectively be shared by each channel. And the source is Trey Rode, Roda. Managing, uh, he's a managing project. Uh, he works with managing, uh, the article he wrote is managing Trade Roda is managing project stakeholders, and it was written in the year 2013. So in short, the higher the interactivity of a communications uh, that you choose, the channel that you choose, the less chance there is for misunderstandings. So if there's interactivity, if you put your message out there and people can write to you and you can respond, then there's no misunderstanding. But if they cannot, if they write to you and there's no response, then you see people are going to form their own impressions. And you know what I said at the beginning, that rumor, the rumor mill should not be allowed to work. So now let's look at the range of options that you have. You know, with newsletter, it is not the best choice because it takes too long to assemble. And furthermore, your information may even be lost. And the people may not have the chance to interact. You, you remember what I said about interactivity. So there may be other articles. Nobody may see your article. If you have a brick and mortar store, remember to put a sign on the door so that those who do not go to your website or receive your emails understand your situation. Since it is a sign, it does not need to be detailed as a letter. So keep the key ones in there. So you can put a banner message on your website. If you, if you don't have, please, at this time, if everybody is going online, look for someone to design a website for you. The banner can be updated in conjunction with any larger communication. So as things come in, then you change because this is a fluid situation. Things keep on changing. This could enable all 
stakeholders to see something immediately while your company formulates more detailed and targeted communications. At the end of this webinar, I'm going to give you links that explain how to add emergency notices to your Facebook and Google pages. The beauty about the options in the middle of this continuum, this middle, where it's uh, email, blog, social media, you know, the beauty is that they are all pretty fast and easy to update. That is important because the situation keeps changing. I keep on saying the situation keeps changing. And that brings us to an important question. The question is, when do you think is the best time to communicate changes to your stakeholders? Please write in the chat box for me. Adaora says now. Yeah. Muyaidi says on real time yeah. basis before the changes occur. Mm -hmm. The other one saying regularly before the changes. As soon as the need arises, that's thank you. Spot on. Spot on. Spot on. Spot on. Spot on. Thank you all very much. You know, get out a message so as much. soon as you have something to say. Jimmy, thank you. The sooner you get the message out, the more likely it is to be read. If you wait Silence. and do it and others have gone. Oh, sorry. I thought you were done. Sorry, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. no, it's okay. Please proceed, Margaret. Oh, no. Let me hear the last one. All right. So there's one here. Muhammad says ASAP. Okay, that's right. She yeah, Kawe says immediately it occurs. Yeah. And last one from Pamela says, whenever the changes occur, you should communicate. Thank you very much. So yes. ideally, ideally, try to get, Jimmy, thank you. Try to get the message out within the first week of the start of change in your, in your, in your area. For example, what message do you have for your stakeholders now that, you know, the, it, it, there's a place that there's a lockdown or there's a place that now the lockdown has been released or now that you've been asked to go to work. So these are all things that you've got to constantly monitor. So now let's look at this too. How often should you communicate with stakeholders? Please give me your answers in the Q&A. Shedrach says immediately. Jacqueline says always. Julia says weekly. Dr. Olufuno says frequently. Yeah. Obara, whenever the need arises, thank you so much. Yeah, so the important thing is frequently, as soon as anything happens, you send out. As soon as something happens, you send out. And, and sending your message also makes you look like you are proactive, concerned about your stakeholder. If you get the message out late, you will not look as empathetic and concerned as others. That could hurt your reputation. You remember I, I started with your reputation. This could hurt your reputation in the marketplace. Remember to send out updates as the situation changes. Please, I take it again. Remember to send out updates as the situation changes. It is likely that you will be required to close your business or for just a few weeks initially, and then later for a longer period. Let your stakeholders know any development, including new services or products that you are now providing or new hours of operation. We have given you a lot to think about today. Before we conclude, let's reflect on what was discussed. Yay, congratulations. You are almost finished with the webinar. Let's see if we have covered what we said we will cover. When we started, I said we'll discuss, we'll introduce ourselves, identify stakeholders concerned in this era, creating effective communications, using appropriate communication channels, and then conclude beautifully. And we also said by the end, you should be able to determine concerns of your key stakeholders, create effective written communications to address these concerns, and identify the right communication channels to reach your stakeholders. Have we been able to do that? If we have, please write yes in this time in the chat box. So whilst you are writing, I will continue with this. The next steps, please, please, please remember to keep an empathetic, concerned, and positive message in your communications. Reach out to management team about this, the next steps. Write that notification. Whilst you write it, be empathetic. Show that you are concerned. Your goal in writing it is to create or promote a goal behind which 
everyone can rally, which keeps spirits high. Publish your notification. Please, you can't light a lamp and put it under a table. As mentioned at the beginning, this webinar is a part of a series that uh, your organization is offering to help, that uh, FCMB is offering to help you weather the storm. So here are others that you could decide to take later. So we've done surviving today to thrive to tomorrow. Today we've looked at communicating with stakeholders and there's accessing final business plan. So those are the things that we can look at later. And let's look at this. These are the useful resources. On the flyer that I'm going to send to you, the resources are already there and you can go and look at other documents that speak to the same thing as Jeff Bezos letter. And this is from FCM is also on the flyer for you. I, I think we're just about done. Um, any last comments from Jimmy, Margaret? Uh, thank you. So from my side, I don't have any other comments. I think we've answered all the major questions. The other one, uh, they are going to be a follow up. So thank you so much and back to you, Margaret. Oh, thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Dennis. It's been a joy working with you. I'm an entrepreneur myself and I'm an SME myself. So I'm not talking to you about something that I would not do. It is what I do myself and what I'm practicing that I'm preaching to you. And I won't leave you with my last words. One of the most important things that you can do for your business at this time is to communicate. Please communicate with every stakeholder. Closing the rumor mill, as I always say early, is the best way to protect your organization's reputation. So please close that rumor mill. Please protect your organization and its reputation. Thank you very much. Bye-bye for now. Okay, very big thank you for ev to everyone that's made time to join us today. Thank you so much. Thanks again to Margaret and the, the combination of Margaret and Jimmy. I mean, and especially thank our partners, um, IFC, for, for helping us to bring this to you. Again, to everyone, as posted on the screen now, the questions and the answers will be uh, shared on our SME platform, which is uh, businesszone.fcmb. Have a nice day. Bye. FCMB, my bank and I.